Good morning, everybody. My name is Ankna Rokiam, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the second of these uh, music webinar series. And today we will be talking about involving students in quality assurance. Um, um, as I mentioned, my name is Ankna Rokiam. I'm originally from India and I moved to Glasgow, um, Scotland to study singing, where I'm currently pursuing my PhD. I am also the student representative in the board of uh, MUSIC. Well, enough about me, we'll move ahead. Uh, just a few practical and housekeeping things. As you're aware, um, this um, session is being recorded. So if you'd like, if you're, com if you're okay, you can e either have your cameras turned on um, or turned off. It's totally up to your discretion, but I would request if you could all mute, um, stay muted um, unless you're um, well, uh, uh, wanting to speak and then we can probably uh, sort that in the Q&A session. Um, just a quick mention also if you are you can select what kind of viewing you want to do because there will be presentations so you can select presentation and speaker or presentation and gallery. Um, as you may have already seen the program for today we will have three speakers um, followed by a question answer a short question answer session after each presentation and a longer Q&A session at the end. Um, just a quick slide about uh, music um, our social media profile so please do follow us or um, like our pages or also go onto our website for a wealth of information uh, about uh, quality assurance in um, higher education music institutions. Um, just as a quick start off, um, if Anna could kindly share the link to Mentimeter and I will share my screen. So Anna will be sharing a link in the chat and if you can click on the link and it will take you to a website, Mentimeter, where you're asked a question and you can just answer the question. It's just a couple of questions to get to know a little bit about you. I will put my chat again. Yes, I am sorry. I can't show it at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just sharing it in the chat. Yeah. So if everybody can click the link and just answer the question um, on the link. And I will just share my screen. That's great. Wonderful. That's great. We have a wide mix of um, people in our webinar this morning and we will go to the next question shortly. Great, and if you can see the first question again, um, there's another question asking you where you are joining us from this morning, and I'll share this screen. Okay. I wish I could say hello in all these languages, but hello and welcome anyway. <laughs> Wonderful. That's great. That's wonderful to see people from um, quite a few countries joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Also, if, you, if you're unable to uh, log into the Mentimeter, feel free to use the chat function as well.
Great. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I'll stop sharing my screen now. Um, just a quick reminder for those of us who have recently joined the call, uh, as you're aware, the webinar is being recorded. So if you are, um, if you would like, you're welcome to turn your, ca turn your cameras on or off, but I would request if you could stay uh, muted until you're invited to speak. Um, I think that's all I have for the introduction. Uh, so we can move on to our first um, speaker of this morning. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Peggy, who is Hello. a member of the... Hi, Peggy. <laughs> Uh, Peggy is a member of the executive executive uh, committee of the European Students Union. Uh, she's a master's degree in research and development of drugs and is currently a PhD student um, in um, oh in quite a few areas. She comes from Croatia and she works uh, worked in the department of biotechnology students council. Um, and other student councils. Her most extensive experience is work on the recognition of prior learning, micro-credentials, sustainability, and enhancement of the quality of education through the regional and national quality assurance committees. Her main areas of work include quality of higher education, quality assurance pool of experts, recognition of prior learning, automatic recognition, academic integrity, brain drain, European Universities Initiative and European Quali Qualifications Framework. Wow, that's quite a mouthful. Uh, welcome, Peggy, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks for this nice uh, introduction. So uh, as you could have heard, I work for uh, ESO. If you didn't hear about us before, I'm just going to briefly introduce the organization. Uh, so we are an umbrella organization situated in uh, Belgium, and uh, we have 45 members, national unions of students from uh, 40 different European countries. And recently we have just added a new member, actually just last week, uh, the Faroe Islands. Uh, we represent approximately uh, 20 million students from all levels of education throughout uh, the European higher education area and our members uh, run according to very strict criteria which is that they have to be student run, autonomous representative and they have to operate according to democratic principles. We have many different partners. Uh, if we we'll look at uh, quality assurance only, we have more than 12 partners, but uh, on our on the lobby level, we collaborate with the European Commission uh, and the Education Audiovisual and Culture Executive Agency. Uh, we are also members of the Bologna follow-up groups, and we lead the uh, Bologna follow-up group uh, on social dimension. Uh, we are members of the E4 group. You all very well know the ENQA, uh, Eurasia, European Universities Association, and then there's us. Uh, but we also collaborate now on a global level with the Global Students Forum, European Youth Forum, with UNESCO, etc. And we have many quality assurance uh, partners, and uh, one of them uh, we collaborate with also is in music. So if we look at the history of um, ESO uh, as we are and how the students have been represented in the external quality assurance, uh, then we can speak about the quality assurance pools, pool of experts that is being run by the European Students' Union. It has been established in uh, 2009 and it's been run by an independent steering committee. Uh, and this uh, steering committee is composed of uh, three members from the pool, uh, me as an executive committee member. And then we have one presidency member who is overseeing the activities that we're doing. Uh, everyone who is a member of this pool, um, or all the students actually who are currently enrolled or have recently graduated can enroll based on a different public criteria and they can run for different positions within the pool uh, exactly on uh, the same level so in the, according to uh, our policies and criteria as well and uh, we also collaborate with relevant stakeholders in the organization of different training sessions for students uh, but also when it comes to different partnerships or uh, assessment procedures uh, our membership in the pool is free and uh, experts are trained and supported in uh, QA uh, in all levels that they require. Uh, if we look at the different activities that uh, we have, yeah, so primarily we deal with the external quality assurance. 
And here I have just put some graphs for you to kind of understand a little bit better how the pool was being developed. So we started um, quite early, but uh, we didn't have the, um, I would say not the equipment, but uh, all roughs, uh, all starts are being a little bit rough. So we started doing a more detailed documentation starting from 2016. And I have put graphs here so you can see exactly how, member, how many members do we have and how many uh, applicants for different position, uh, positions. In 2021, we have uh, had a lower uh, amount of the applicants and now currently we have 65 members. So the situation is more similar to the period of 2019-2020. And the number of reviews that we have been doing in the past has been increasingly, um, it's been increasing uh, in the past years. And you can see that we started from just three reviews per year to now having around 90 reviews per year. So we require uh, quite a big number of students to be involved and actively participate uh, in external QA. And this is the process. So once we are contacted by our partner, we open a call, which is usually um, open for around two weeks. However, um, this can be um, also changed if, for example, partner requires um, a last minute change or if uh, the student drops out or something, then we uh, lower this uh, application deadline. We collect the data from all of our applicants and we access it, uh, assess it according to different criteria. So this criteria is, uh, for example, uh, gender balance of the pool, then the experience of the expert itself uh, in a certain field, um, then their participation in trainings and education, um, the opportunities within SO, etc. And in the end, the best candidates are being put forward uh, and their information is shared with the agencies who then pick uh, the expert that they want uh, to hire uh, for a certain review. Uh, if we look at the external QA in general from the perspective of the QA pool, uh, we see that the role of our students is usually being a panel member. However, we have had students in the past who function not only as uh, secretaries, uh, but also uh, as panel chairs. And these are uh, some of our proudest moments. Uh, and for example, uh, one of them, maybe you have heard, uh, was uh, Gohar Kofanisian, who was before the president of ESO as well. And the input that, uh, from our perspective, we can provide the best um, is not only um, the student feedback on uh, different aspects of teaching and learning, uh, but also uh, what we think is that, uh, or how we would like our pool also to be recognized, is that uh, we are actually choosing the students who are experts fit to a certain evaluation field that we are choosing them for. So they're not only there to provide uh, students feedback, but also relevant feedback in the field of their studies. And uh, when we look at uh, some of these expertise fields, they are student-centered learning, teaching and assessment, admission progression recognition and certification of um, students throughout their education period, learning resources, student support, public information, uh, improvements from one period to the other. Also the accessibility is something that the students um, most are most likely to comment on. And uh, what is an additional benefit is that in our pool, we also have some of the students who are not only uh, interested in quality assurance per se, but also function as students representatives. And this can also provide an additional uh, feedback for the institutions on how the students um, can actually be involved in governance and how the programs or institutions are involving them in governance. Uh, then we have the publication, uh, which I have put also the link here, uh, but I can also share it in the chat later, it's uh, not a problem. 
so it's the Bologna with Student Eyes publication, which uh, was written for 2020, but was published in 2021. And according to this, there are certain documents which are relevant for us. I'm sure that uh, many of you know these documents uh, as well. So we have the Berlin com uh, Communique, uh, in, which was done in 2003, and uh, it has put forward the quality assurance as one of the fundamental priorities of the European higher education area. Uh, then, uh, of course, we had uh, the development uh, and the establishment, uh, later even the modifications to the European standards and guidelines, and currently now we have those uh, from 2015 uh, active. Uh, then we have the Yerevan communique, which was in 2015, and uh, this communique put um, an accent on quality assurance being um, multi-purposeful. So it's not only the purpose in itself to kind of tick the boxes, but uh, also has different roles uh, in European higher education area. And then we had the uh, Paris communique, uh, which reiterated that quality assurance is a key to developing mutual institutional trust, but also it can contribute to mobility, recognition, uh, and periods within the EAGA. Uh, when we discussed this topic uh, with our students, with our national unions uh, in particular, we asked them what is for them the purpose of quality assurance and most of them see it as enhancing study conditions. So it's not assuring them, but uh, rather enhancement. Uh, then provision of information and transparency, accountability and the trust between stakeholders are the main motivations why uh, quality assurance should be in place. However, uh, the main barriers where we see, uh, which we can recognize, are actually the lack of information about the quality uh, assurance among the student body uh, and uh, representatives as well. And uh, of course, that the participation in quality assurance is not facilitated or recognized by higher education institutions. And this is not something that we have seen only in this publication, but also in the Bologna with Student Eyes 2018 too. And this is um, a very visual map that shows you um, the distribution of um, quality assurance a pool of experts for students in different countries. So the green ones indicate where um, the organizations uh, for quality assured student experts are put in place by the students themselves. Uh, and then uh, yellow ones are the ones which are run by different agencies uh, or governmental institutions. And the pink ones are those where uh, no quality assurance student expert pools exist. Uh, we also asked them uh, about different databases, particularly ECAR um, database. So how many uh, student unions support the existence of such database? And we can see that many of them uh, do, and they actually uh, consider that uh, this database should uh, increase the automatic recognition, which is showed by the second graph. So. Um, Students believe that the foreign QA agencies recognized in ECOR uh, should perform reviews um, in the countries, uh, but under different conditions. So uh, either some consider that uh, these um, uh, assessments should be automatic, automatically recognized in different countries, but the other also, others also consider that uh, the national QA agency should be the one who should um, evaluate these certain things and the other institutions and not uh, rely only on the ECAR database. And the impact that the students see that the ECAR has made is definitely the increase of uh, transparency and enabling the cross-border uh, QA as the main reasons. Uh, our student experts say that uh, collaboration is actually uh, the key and the students shouldn't be just seen as corrective factors in QA uh, procedures, but uh, insightful collaborators. And students can often be quite critical, but they often also mean well and they like to feel useful and fight for the rights that they would like to have at their institutions as well. Uh, students need to be prepared, so uh, we know it's quite hard because students leave and change all the time, uh, but the students require preparation for these procedures. Uh, 
and uh, the students actually want to participate. Sometimes we get also criticism from other uh, agencies that the students are over prepared, uh, so even more engaged than some of the other experts uh, in different topics. And uh, also uh, our experts say that the students need to be equal to other panel members in all aspects. So they do not only require um, to have equal commitments and equal workload, uh, but they also want to be uh, paid the same and they want to contribute the same. So they don't want to be there to just sit through the review and get the money. They uh, actually want to give their feedback. Uh, some of the recent interests that we have seen uh, in students' uh, participation are the digitalization of education um, connected to COVID, but also to um, different uh, new technologies that we are using, uh, the quality assurance of the European Universities Alliances, and uh, also recognition as a part of the quality assurance processes. And uh, this, uh, this is the final slide. What do we see uh, in quality assurance for the future? Uh, we see the um, reconnection to the student-centered learning, especially in the digital environment, uh, interlinking academic integrity with the quality assurance, especially now this is apparent with the proctoring services where the students are being quite concerned. Uh, Micro-credentials and digital credentials through the QA systems, social dimension, the development of the European education area, and the redefining the uh, ESGs that we currently have. And what we want to see most of all is students being respectful, uh, respected as their rightful and equal stakeholders in higher education. Uh, I would like to thank you. And if there are any questions, I'm open to answer them. Wow. Thank you very much, Peggy. That was really, really insightful to actually um, see um, figures and data about um, actual uh, collation of um, this kind of research. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, just to remind everybody that we will be having a longer Q&A session um, at the end of these three talks, but please feel free to put your questions in the chat function. And if you'd rather not want to ask questions publicly, you can just put it, you can message me privately and I can ask it on your behalf as well. So um, Peggy, just maybe like a couple of questions before I get the next speaker in. Um, I was really uh, glad to see that the, the word enhancement was used because I think sometimes in this whole um, world of uh, quality assurance, we kind of forget that enhancement is one of the key outcomes that we would like um, of out of these practices. But um, according to like your research and studies, what is the general trend of um, student involvement and in quality assurance in higher education institutions um, in the last decade? Are you seeing a rise or is it downward or is it pretty um, stagnant? What? I would say that this uh, depends also um, on the field uh, and also on the countries and the national policies. So we see differences um, in maybe the countries who had a little bit, uh, were a little bit worse uh, at the beginning of the decade. Mm -hmm. So uh, Southeastern Europe um, especially had a very minimal involvement of students where now we see that they are being considered as equal partners. Uh, of course, um, there are countries who are a little more developed, for example, Germany, uh, who has such a high participation of students uh, and students' involvement, but also preparation for different reviews. And there are students always come as experts and uh, also come all, also a little bit like the teachers to maybe uh, some other students who are joining for the first time. Uh, but in, in general, I would say that mm, in, it's enhancing a little bit how the students are being um, uh, treated and recognized and involved in the QA processes, but we are still not at the same level across the EAGA. And there is a huge discrepancy between the EU and non-EU countries as well. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, I think there are a couple of people that might have raised their hands. I'm just going to uh, go to the floor. Um, would uh, Ju Julia Peters, I think you had your hand up. Um, I don't know if it was a question or a comment you'd like to make? Um, I, I don't think we're able to hear you.
Uh, no, but I can lip read you saying, can you hear me? Um, <laughs> Zoom has made me better at lip reading. <laughs> um, why don't we go to maybe Maria, Anna, and then come back to you, Julia. And if not, we do have time at the end to get to your question as well. Um, do we have Mariana? Yes. I, I didn't uh, raise my hand. Sorry, I was okay. just clapping. Clapping. <laughs> that was fine. That was very yeah enthusiastic. Thank you very much. Great. That was clapping from Julia Peters as well. Wonderful. Clearly, a lot of um, enthusiastic support for uh, Peggy's presentation. Thank you. Yes, but just a reminder: if you do have questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat window or raise your hands, and we would. Yes. Maybe one comment. Um, sure. it would be great, um, Peggy, if you could put the link. Um, in the chat of the document that you um yep I'll do presentation that would be very helpful thank you yeah um we have a couple of um links that we will be sending along with our feedback question oh, that we we'll talk about later but we will collate all these as well but yes please put that in the chat thank you. but for those who won't get it now we will make sure to send them after the presentation as well um so one quick question if I may um uh, Peggy before moving to our next speaker um to like i mean everybody here would want to know this and i know there's not just one way or it's not just a question that you can answer maybe in a couple of minutes but if you could just perhaps start us with a discussion about what do you think is the most attractive way uh for students to get involved in quality assurance like you know participating through student unions setting up student representation systems but if you could just maybe like sow some seeds that we can later pick up in the question and answer session mm -hmm, yeah uh, definitely what i noticed it's um, the discussion between the students and then students kind of rec recruit themselves uh, because um, the QA as a topic doesn't sound very interesting to the students and it's not also a topic that the students can just easily get into. So they have to learn something first and they also need to realize that what they're doing is not actually gonna, probably not gonna change uh, much for them during their period of study, but they can actually do and inspire a lot of changes for um, the generations that come after them. So uh, it's a really, I would say, um, selfless uh, field of work and usually networking between students. So uh, reaching out to the student unions, uh, trying to collaborate with them is something that works best because then the students uh, kind of can share this knowledge between them without the fear of uh, maybe just uh, seeming like uh, they don't know something or being afraid that they will make a mistake or say something that they would consider stupid, uh, which usually isn't, but um, it, it is a hard, hard to start. But I think that yeah. once the students uh, stay there, and uh, this is what we see also with our students, so if they start with the bachelor level, usually they will um, stay until they finish their PhD also. So we have students who have been in the pool for quite a long time now. Very nice. Yeah, no, thank you so much. I'm sure we will pick on that. Um, uh, we'll delve into it further in the Q&A session. We have a question from um, Linda. Linda, if we can, um, I think it's a very interesting question and I think we should spend more time on it. So if we can get, uh, we can um, ask the question in the longer Q&A session. That would be great. Um, wonderful. Uh, well, I would like to introduce our next speaker for today is um, Mimi. I should have checked um, yeah, I wanted to check if it is Miranda or Mimi, but I'm, I know you as Mimi. I have the pleasure of knowing, uh, working with Mimi and knowing her as well. Um, Mimi is the co-chair of the Student Network for the European Association of the Conservatoires, and she is a panelist for the Office of, for Students, which is an independent regulator for higher education in England. Uh, she was awarded a postgraduate degree in cello performance and composition at Leeds Conservatoire, where she was president of the Students' Union. She's also been involved as chair of Conservatoire's UK Students' Network. Um, as a result of her expertise, Mimi is a member of many different bodies in the cultural and musical sector in the UK. With her mission in quality assurance, she's frequently invited to critically review institutions across Europe. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mimi, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much for such a wonderful introduction. Um, please bear with me while I just share my screen. Hopefully find it. That's wonderful. As Mimi's uh, sharing her screen, just want to also welcome uh, the music board members who've joined us this morning. Thank you for being with us. Uh, maybe we can do a wee 
wave uh, at some point, but yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. So, um, yes, thank you very much to uh, Musique for the um, invitation to come and present uh, some of my kind of personal experiences. Um, so I felt it was necessary for, for me personally to split my experience into um, a few sections. So um, the first uh, set of examples is when I was a course or an academic representative. Um, and I did this role throughout my bachelor and master's programmes at Leeds Conservatoire. Um, at, at my institution, uh, course representatives are treated um, quite seriously and, and, you know, we're treated professionally as well. Um, as part of, part of this kind of role, we, we had to obtain feedback and, of course, give feedback through standard methods, which included surveys, module evaluations, focus groups, etc. We were kind of almost an extension of the um, student engagement department uh, in that respect. The quality department then decided that there were too many surveys that were being sent out. Um, and of course, they had student feedback to prove this. So they were able to masterfully, purposefully design um, a few surveys throughout the year with very brief and succinct questions to maximize engagement. And uh, the, the course representatives uh, fed into that as well. Um, another method of, you know, what, what I did personally was to, to provide paper copies of module evaluations in class. Um, these were co collected afterwards and then delivered to the academic registry office by a student volunteer. Um, and of course, this was to avoid any potential for tutors to read the feedback. Um, we found that there were a higher number of participants this way, um, uh, rather than just having another survey sent via email. Focus groups were incentivized uh, to, to have higher engagement. Um, so students were offered vouchers of their choices. So that included a local vinyl uh, shop or Amazon or whatever. Um, one area of good practice that I'd really love to highlight is the student staff forum. Um, this consisted of course representatives and one staff representative from each department. So it was quite a large meeting. So we had both academic and professional services. This was co-chaired by the students union president and the vice principal. And students were able to bring a whole plethora of issues back uh, in terms of feedback, both positive and negative. The only rule was that any issue had to affect more than one or two students. Otherwise, it kind of had to be raised it, you know, kind of outside of this uh, very public forum. Um, it was formally minuted and all issues were recorded with an action for the relevant staff members. The results were published on our virtual learning environment, but also the course representatives fed back on social media, in class, etc. Some tutors would also do the same. Serious issues were raised across both academic and uh, professional services. So for example, having access to equipment. Um, prior to COVID, students requested having the sanitizer stations on every floor. Um, but then of course, there were some lighter issues as well. Um, so students requesting menu changes in the cafe bar um, or, or price differences, etc. This then began to get a little bit too big and long with the introduction of new courses when the institution went from being a music um, con conservatoire to a performing arts conservatoire. So pathway councils were created. So then student, apologies. So then student academic representatives were actually, um, sorry, student academic representatives were actually, let me find my notes, yes. Yes, they, they met with their heads of course, apologies. So student representatives met with their heads of course to discuss anything about their academic experience. Again, these are um, minuted and moderated by a member of the student experience or the quality department. Anything that appears to be a wider issue beyond the remit of the course leader was then taken to the student staff forum. So for example, if students were querying the difference in technical examination requirements in the different instrument faculties, that was taken to the Pathway Council. But if, for example, students were concerned about the lack of practice spaces, that was sent to the Student Staff Forum. Um, this has arguably been the most effective way of, of both kind of giving feedback and then, of course, seeing concrete changes. 
It's quite a transparent process. And therefore, it kind of gave faith and trust in the system. Even, you know, even the way that the room is prepared is in a big circle. So it feels more like students and staff are working together rather than this kind of us versus them um, rhetoric. Um, so the president, well, when I was elected as president of the Students' Union, I was also required to sit on a variety of committees, including Internal Quality Assurance Committee, Academic Council, the Joint Quality Committee with our validating body. Um, you also end up working with other departments on actually creating the surveys and then shaping and chairing the focus groups. So you then really get to see kind of behind the scenes and the rationale for why these things are being created. One of the difficulties, of course, with smaller institutions is receiving this informal kind of verbal feedback. Luckily, the culture at my institution has meant that most things that were raised were taken quite seriously. An important thing to note about the culture is that the institution was able to explain why it was important and students could see the change happen within their cycle, of course, within reason, depending on the um, nature of the issue. This, again, gave them faith and trust in the system, so they were able to see this concrete, concrete change and impact. Um, when I, in my first month of, of being Students' Union president, I had a baptism of fire in quality assurance when the institution had their higher education review by the UK Quality Assurance Agency, and I was the lead student representative. And it was actually an amazing opportunity to kind of reflect back um, and, you know, it, it, it could, because you were able to read the previous self-evaluation reports and you could really feel that the student vo voice hadn't been embedded as much. Um, and I can understand that it can quite easily become a bit of a box ticking exercise. But here I was writing about the entire institution from the student's perspective, which amassed in a 40 page report about everything from support services, academic representation, the culture, facilities. And this was sent alongside the institution's SER. And when I've now done external QA reviews, I actually miss having that from the student perspective. Um, I was given practical support by the QAA and by the vice principal and the um, head of registry, but they also understood that it had to be an independent report. And I think they were very um, restrained actually in being able to kind of step back and just allow me to kind of get on with it. Um, as I also included recommendations to the institution. So overall, my personal experiences um, have, have been quite positive. So I was treated as a partner. I was seen as an equal. It's always been a transparent process and the feedback loop has always been closed in one way or another. Of course, there's room for improvement because nothing's perfect. Um, so then I'd like to talk a little about my personal experiences in external quality assurance. So um, yes, I'm a student expert for music, um, the European of Students Unions um, QA pool and for EQ Arts. Um, uh, so some of the reviews that I've done, I've, you know, just you just get an amazing oversight of different institutions and you're able to learn about the cultural differences, which I think are really important. Um, it's really it's really rewarding feeling that, you know, the student voice is central because, of course, we are a majority stakeholder. And I think that, you know, people do forget that sometimes. Um, of course, then you can take best practice back and I teach at the junior college, so I'm able to take some of that back into my own learning and teaching practices. But ultimately, you know, you're treated as a partner and as an equal by every review team that I've worked with. Um, so then I thought it would be nice to talk about um, kind of others' perspectives. Um, so to any of the students in the audience, please share your experiences in the chat and hopefully we'll be able to have time to pick them up in the, in the Q&A. Um, so yes, I have some anecdotal evidence in my years of student experience and engagement, particularly across Europe. The culture very much depends on the institution and of course can differ greatly. Broadly speaking, I would say that there are three types of cultures and they each treat students differently. So you've got students as strangers, students as students, and then students as partners. So thinking about students as strangers, this is very much a part of that traditional conservatoire master apprentice model where everything's very top down. 
There's this assumption that students are too busy to be involved or too focused on their studies. And therefore students are, are involved in very little to no consultation. Most likely they don't have student academic representation systems, or if they do, they're not particularly well established for a multitude of reasons. Students often feel unheard, which can lead to a lack of engagement. Um, they're not, the feedback loop isn't completely closed. Um, and there's this kind of resistance to change sometimes in, in the culture. And I, th I think that probably comes from having a bit more of a fixed mindset or perhaps being slightly stressed by the idea of having to make larger changes. Um, then you have students as students, and this is more nuanced because students uh, will have some involvement, but, but you know, it might be that they have a mixture of both ends of the spectrum. So they may, for example, have established representation systems. The feedback loop may not, of course, be completely closed. Um, and once again, institutions may be a bit more resistant to change. And then finally, we have students as partners. So I'm very fortunate that I, I kind of fall into the into this last category in my experiences. So, you know, I've always been treated as an equal. I've been given agency. Um, it's always been a collaborative relationship and students are always a constant and integral part of this feedback loop. Um, very strong academic or student representation systems. And these institutions are more likely to embrace change and have that growth mindset. Um, I also spoke with um, the student working group within the European Association of Conservatoires, because some of them also have experience doing um, external QA reviews. And I just asked them for their experiences. And I mean, I, I won't read them all out, uh, but you can see that it's very positive. So, you know, they were able to learn a lot working in professional teams. There's networking in there. It's really rewarding and important to bring the student perspective. You feel listened to. It's important that um, uh, the leadership and all stakeholders are asked questions by a student. Um, and there's one, one very important point here. Some simply just aren't used to taking students so seriously in these quite formal settings. So um, I think that's a, that's a very important thing that I wanted to highlight. And of course, you know, on a more personal note, you just gain so much perspective. And as I mentioned, networking as well. So yes, um, thank you. I did wonder if any of the, I'm just gonna stop sharing and have a look at the chat to see whether any of the students in the audience have any experiences that they would like to share as well. But feel free to raise your hand as well. Do you agree with what I've said? Would you disagree? Stunned into silence. I know, no, no, I was just waiting if there was anybody else. That was excellent, Mimi. It's so, so um, important to hear like your own perspective um, and your experience being part of. And I think too, uh, um, one thing that has been quite evident both in yours and Peggy's presentation is students as equals and how important that is um while we wait for other people to maybe you can just a reminder you can either raise your hands and we can ask you to perhaps ask your question or if you would like you can also use the chat function uh, which should be an option at the bottom of your screen but uh, mimi i will take the chair privilege and maybe um put forward a couple of questions if that's okay um based on your um experience which is quite um substan which, which is a lot um how would you, um, talking about student representation in your institution in particular, um, how did you convey the insights? Like, how did you represent an entire body of students? How did, what, what was that like? If Thank you. It, it was difficult, I have to say. I, I think with my student, with my academic representative hat on, so when I was just representing my cohort of classical students, it was a lot easier. Um, whereas, of course, when you're having to represent the entire student body on these, you know, more formal committees, um, I mean, it's just about having as much as much insight on the ground as possible. Um, so, again, that's utilising academic representation systems, um, asking questions during rehearsals, picking up on feedback on social media is a very big one, because at my institution, again, this culture, we have a closed Facebook group where everyone in the college is on it within reason um, all students and 
you're able to pick up feedback from there. So when I was president, I was able to say, OK, well, clearly a lot of you are complaining about this. Let's, you know, let's see what can be done. And then again, feeding back into closing that loop by replying to that comment. Everyone receives the notification to see that something's being acted upon. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I particularly found that challenging as well because um, we just don't have music at RCS. We also have um, drama, dance, film production as well. So then it's kind of having mechanisms in place where you're able to get feedback from all students and you're able to reflect that uh, when you're representing them. Um, and you have also participated in external quality assurance uh, processes at other institutions. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about the training you've received in your various kind of roles? Mm, absolutely. So um, I've done music training. Um, I've done training with the Quality Assurance Agency when we had our higher education review, but that was in 2015. So it was a while ago. Um, and then there are a lot ESU when I, because this is my third year on the QA pool for ESU. And I've done quite a lot of, um, they've got webinars and things on different topics. It's been great, particularly this year. I think they, they listen to the feedback from, the, uh, from the, the pool of experts about having further training opportunities. Um, and then finally, I'm doing a, a review next week, actually. Um, and so the agency that sent us have actually provided um, training so that we understand the, the legal system in that country as well. Yeah, um, that's very interesting. Um, I think in regards to training, it can, like Peggy mentioned, that it like a lot of these things depend on the geographical locations, on the countries, the policies, the local policies, the local government, etc. Um, so may, hopefully, we'll. I, I'd like to ask you more about that um, in the longer Q and I'm getting excited about this longer Q and A session. I think we've got some good questions lined up. But yes, uh, uh, please feel free to ask questions. Um, also, um, what areas do you think you would require would require a deeper student involvement from a QA uh, perspective in higher music education, for example, like organizational or facilities management, curriculum development, maybe like a couple of things before? I mean, all of the above. I yeah. think if 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 an institution is having a review, like I said, you know, writing up that that student report that I had to do in 2015 I found truly invaluable and I you know and I know that the QAA do kind of it's not it's not a requirement but it's kind of expected of and I think that that really helps ensure that the student voice is embedded throughout because as I said earlier I think it can become quite easy when you an evident when you're reading SERs to see that they they haven't quite embedded the student voice throughout they kind of just tick the box and say students sit on this board and that's it you, you can tell when the student voice isn't involved as much. Yeah, yeah. Um, great. Yes. No, thank you very much for your presentation. And um, I look forward to uh, discussing it more and, um, in uh, later on in the webinar. Uh, but without any further ado, um, I'd like to invite our third uh, speaker and presenter for today is uh, Ricard. Oh, we do have a question from uh, Dame Janet and we will get to that in the Q&A session. But yes, uh, uh, Ricard is uh, Secretary for Quality at the Rector's Office of uh, Yanatech uh, Academy of Music and Performing Arts in Brno. He is Associate Professor of Multimedia Performance and Composition at the Department of Composition, Conducting and Opera Directing, where he is also the member of the Departmental Board of Composition and theory of composition. He's also um, an associate professor at the Faculty of Fine Arts at Brno University of Technology. Um, he's from Slovakia and during the last decade he has been part of uh, academic and expert boards in higher education and professional bodies within the art sector in Czech Republic and abroad, including the Art Council of JAMU at Brno and the ELIA in Amsterdam. He was appointed Vice Rector for International Relations and Research between 2010 and 2018 at JAMU um, at Breno. And the agenda was extended in 2017 to include quality assurance and evaluation. So again, we have a wealth of experience here. Um, so I would like to ask uh, Ricard to take over. The yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's an honor for me to, to be part of this discussion, but 
uh, maybe uh, I'm a little bit uh, not really representative for speaking about uh, uh, the real uh, feeling of the uh, involvement the students into the processes and in the schools uh, because I'm on the uh, other side, not not the student. But uh, let me maybe more make an introduction of a Czech system, uh, more than some kind of uh, the detailed of the students' participation. Also because uh, uh, it's not so easy for me to, to represent only one institution. And also uh, I've been uh, coordinating uh, some kind of external evaluation through the music and the EQ arts uh, since uh, 2017 in six different faculties in Czech Republic. And that's also maybe quite interesting to have this kind of uh, experience with the uh, starting of the QA uh, processing in, in, the, in the Czech schools. But uh, I have to tell it's really starting and in some schools it's before the starting. So it's not so easy to, to recognize what's really uh, focus on the QA or this kind of like uh, European high education area uh, based uh, uh, the overview about the quality because most of the artistic institutions are focused on the quality through the artistic outcomes only. Yeah, and then uh, the performance is quite quite huge. Uh, for example, number of the of the concerts of uh, of of our faculty is more than three uh, two hundred fifty in one year, and it's just like amazing if you can imagine small city and a uh, lot of concerts in it. So back to the Czech Republic. Uh, the in Czech, Czech Republic, we are speaking about the ten million citizens. Uh, uh, let's say like basic. Uh, of what does it mean uh, the population in Czech Republic. Uh, there are 26 public universities, two state universities and 34 private higher education institutions. So uh, it means uh, uh, in the last year uh, almost 300,000 students. Uh, in the, in the uh, position of the universe is also very separated, uh, uh, the strong body and uh, it's uh, kind of research de development and innovation council of government of the Czech Republic, uh, which is uh, uh, almost uh, more than 30% uh, uh, of the financing of a university based on the, on the research outcomes. Uh, reporting through some kind of uh, reporting uh, tool as REV uh, in Czech Republic. And maybe we can move to another, to the, the second. Uh, thank you. Uh, the third theory, education uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, uh, there are big discussion now uh, about uh, uh, for example, move uh, of the academic study programs from art uh, per, uh, institutions to the professional uh, study programs, which is possible by the, the, the new uh, uh, university law, but uh, it's not really uh, interesting for the, the, the faculties and, and the academies uh, as well. It's uh, maybe not the bad experience in, in foreign countries with it, but uh, there are threats uh, which can be related to this movement and maybe will be more explained the situation in Czech Republic. Uh, the first of all, there is really a non-existence of the interdepartmental inter communication between the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Education of Czech Republic. And uh, this is quite a big problem. We are trying to, to do that more than 15 years, but it's not so easy. And uh, also our uh, focus on a, on a professional uh, uh, or, or development of a professional background uh, for the, the, the graduates uh, is really now related only to the Ministry of Education mostly. And uh, the, the, the movement to the professional uh, study programs can be very dangerous this way. Uh, also an ambition of uh, or uh, ending of the discussion about what does it mean artistic research, which is very interesting last five, five years or maybe more uh, behavior uh, in academic uh, 
field, uh, we are really uh, established a lot of uh, very good uh, um, tools for, for make more helpful the students uh, movement uh, from the academic position or only the, the artistic uh, creation position to the, to the real personal uh, uh, research experience. And uh, the third problem is uh, also related to the artistic research. Uh, we found uh, in the last 15 years, like really huge development of the third cycle of education in the context of doctoral study. And uh, we found uh, the more and more quality of outputs through the balance of practice-based artistic research and informed uh, theoretical uh, reflection. Uh, which means, uh, uh, like, to, to have a point of view also from the from the position of uh, well-founded practitioners uh, as artists could be. So this is uh, uh, the, the one kind of uh, uh, let's say like added uh, the problem which we are dealing with. Uh, please make okay, can you change the slide? Thank you. Uh, the method of financing is also very interesting context, which is uh, much more influenced. There are uh, not really strategic document uh, about the cultural politic in the uh, policy in the uh, in the state, uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, very problematic. Uh, uh, the, the situation, as I, I mentioned before, uh, because we are more dependent only the research uh, council uh, source, which uh, don't recognize artistic research as relevant or, or uh, comparable with uh, academic research. And also uh, we are not fully recognized as, a, as a research institutions in Czech Republic. But uh, this is also slightly changing. Uh, under the the, the, the huge uh, behavior of, of the people who are uh, part of the of the representative bodies on the ministry level. Uh, also the persist of uh, lack of understanding of representatives of a ministry, uh, in especially what doesn't mean the individual uh, study form or form of study or education. It, it just really uh, the kind of uh, uh, problem uh, because trends in focusing on recognizing uh, and, and the selection of the narrow group of talented and disposable candidates, what we are doing and uh, from the resulted provision of uh, this high, high quality of graduates, uh, this is kind of uh, uh, like efficient of management of financial event, uh, investments uh, as a kind of I, as a kind of uh, as from my perspective good practice uh, because we are not spending so much money for bigger number of students and uh, we are really focusing of, of the quality and also the threats related to the proportion of artistic disciplines uh, they are very uh, subjective uh, in the concept of quality evaluation and uh, also this kind of maintenance of uh, operational and professional balance, which is related to this kind of subjectivity and very tiny uh, uh, tuning uh, the, 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 the uh, disciplines. Czech art schools have developed a new system, uh, which is new situation for register of artistic performance uh, in all kinds of experts outcomes. It's called RUV. Uh, this is the system is based on annual ver verification of the students and the teachers results by external experts. Originally, it was supposed to be a model of uh, as a kind of example of a sectoral tool for recording outputs in hard science. It was not happened, but for us, for our, uh, our institution, is a very good situation because now is it uh, used also as a tool for make the relation to the performance of art schools and to influence the national uh, university budget development. Uh, so, in in Czech Republic, are four autonomous schools uh, which we called academies. It's a academy of performing arts in Prague. Janáček Akademie 
Academy of Performing and, Perf and Music Arts in Brno, Academy of Fine Arts in Prague, and Academy of Arts, Architecture and Design in Prague. Uh, these four universities uh, are currently funded by a contract which is renewed every three years. Uh, they have uh, also set uh, limits in, in, in uh, have to set limits in the students number for, uh, for it. And uh, this is the model uh, kind of unique in Czech Republic, which allows for much greater stability in strategic planning and also for the decision making uh, at such small budgets we are really dealing with. In, uh, in a complete, completely different situation are faculties organized by, by bigger uh, general or polytechnical research universities. They are dependent on negotiation within their universities in, uh, and have more problematic and much more fragile funding for their strategies. Very often less money for the same accreditation study programs as a big autonomous schools, it means. So it's really not comparable uh, also as a kind of benchmarking uh, possibility. It's not so easy. Uh, and the, and the uh, study programs in art and design, we can recognize uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of good uh, practices in the level of, of really small size of, of the faculties because we are speaking about no more than 500 students, usually between 300 and 500 students in all cycles and in all disciplines and between 60 or 80 academic staff. Uh, this is like, as I told, like quite efficient in the, in the using the money of state for uh, developing uh, and also for uh, for making insurance uh, of the graduate uh, abilities and but also it's a kind of uh, uh, risk because uh, for example there are only two institutions uh, oriented to the, uh, the faculties in performing the disciplines such as the music or dramatic art and uh, there is also a problem for the benchmarking uh, and for some kind of uh, developing some some wider system uh, of the of the external feedback to the quality uh, development in the institutions uh, and uh, uh, I think it's more generation related perception and uh, which is like really about uh, uh, like we are dependent of the Czech languages and it's a language and it's not possible to create more faculties because or more study programs because uh, it's enough to have only two uh, faculties for example in drama and uh, uh, this is also part of the conservative focus uh, on the local territory or, or cultural environment as we are like really depend of, of small country and small sizes. Similar problem is in the field of, of uh, cinema uh, or, or move, excuse, excuse me, uh, of film uh, like movie production. Uh, there are two faculties of public schools and one small private school which is uh, uh, oriented uh, to that field of development. Better situation is in fine art, design and new media. There are two autonomous academies in Prague and uh, uh, which are not structured uh, in faculties, uh, which is comparable to all, to all other seven faculties which are part of uh, usually uh, University of Technologies, uh, as for example, the Brno Faculty of Iron Art. Uh, architecture is very specific, uh, problematic uh, as a field uh, because uh, it's now recognized uh, more by National Accreditation Board, nor under the field of technology, not uh, under the field of arts, but there are three faculties uh, of architecture in Czech Republic. And uh, this is also uh, kind of uh, interesting because if we are focusing on, on the how uh, wide is the range of the of the disciplines? Uh, if we are still speaking about the small fac uh, small institutions, uh, it's quite large uh, and uh, 
uh, and different uh, in approaches uh, in almost full range of existing creative activities and, and, and strategies in, in, the, in the schools. Uh, and if we are focusing on the on, on a real setup of the, of, of the quality system, uh, there are big uh, difference between uh, these four like uh, stoned and, and, uh, and big academies, like big means uh, like independent academies and the faculties which are depend of the system of a quality of, of university that is really different uh, if we are speaking about the general university and if we are speaking about the tech, uh, university of technology. Uh, and the, if we are more focused on the, what does it mean that the, the, the representation of the student's voice in the uh, so uh, in the academic sentence of universities uh, is guaranteed by the University Act uh, of Czech Republic, uh, as well as uh, the students' representatives, usually one of the member of uh, academic senates, are also part of relatively new established quality councils. Uh, other committees uh, than uh, academic senate are mostly staffed or, or supplemented by students uh, at large schools only. We also noted that the, the, the tendency to cancel the mandatory participation of students chamber representatives from elected bodies such as uh, the academic senate during the last novelization of the University Act was really uh, the big, uh, uh, big problem. But fortunately it did not uh, happen and uh, uh, did not go through the paragraph versions because uh, it would probably go through parliament without bigger problems. So now it's uh, still uh, the, the, the university law in the uh, in the situation I told you, like there is like really a uh, uh, guarantee of the, of the students representation in the, the main bodies. But not everywhere is part of the rules of also, for example, if we are speaking about the, the performance of the of the boards, they are not uh, so uh, often uh, some kind of like conciliation procedure if uh, the students uh, are not satisfied uh, and uh, the majority of their votes uh, in rejecting a, the decision uh, which could be uh, uh, made a, a, some kind of uh, 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 some kind of outcome against their interest and uh, this is uh, also a uh, possibility for provoking for the negotiation for find the consensus which is uh, like standard but not in all uh, institutions I've, I, I've been visited. Uh, there are also uh, signs of student organization from bottom up at the faculties with the intention of uh, being interested in the organization of education and then engaging in possible influencing only in serious situation. For example, when detecting a mistake to the, the, the treatment of students, uh, but usually this activity does not continue, especially after the change of students after they uh, graduate. Uh, involvement of the students and executive, executive uh, uh, committees and boards uh, of art faculties and the schools uh, uh, on their study related decision making processes and in the, in the roles of observers in decision making on the personal uh, and financial management uh, should be the, the, the rule, but in most crucial processes of most departments and workplaces uh, uh, and some institution, institutions, uh, uh, it is not so. Yeah. Uh, the other slide, please. At the, at the technical universities, I recognized uh, a quite problematic approach to the application of the principles of student-centered learning uh, by settings uh, of study plans, uh, I mean uh, ESG 2015. Uh, the, the similar practice can be recognized also in some departments of art schools, uh, 
mainly with the significant dependence of, of craft skills, especially in the bachelor's degree. It is uh, manifested in particular, if we, were, we, would, we would like to recognize it, it's like a very low number of credits for profiling subjects and only a few for some kind of, uh, 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 like for, for making on, on choice. Uh, high, high time stress of com consumption by performance of the, the requirements of compulsory uh, subjects and also low number uh, or absence of the option, optional subjects. Uh, so the, the common practice uh, uh, is also interesting to, to see the position of the younger researchers. Uh, the common practice in considering PhD students only as a student and not as a young researchers, which means like uh, uh, these students usually fall only to the agenda of student departments uh, and evaluation of their work is through artistic or through art theory outputs, not research based. And if they are no related to research department, there is uh, much more complicated to get grants for research projects for, for them, uh, not only the external, but also internal in, in the bigger schools. And then it's also opposite uh, 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 behavior we can recognize. Like if the students uh, or be employed for teaching and, and at the same time uh, be listed as a student, uh, mostly in a doctoral level, this is uh, uh, really weakens the students' uh, voice in the boards. Uh, this real conflict of the interest. Uh, representatives of the students uh, or the, their chambers who have uh, uh, also been academic staff for several years often appear in the academic senate and thus often naturally represent the interest of the school management rather than students' needs. So that's also we can uh, also speak, uh, uh, please next slide, uh, about the, uh, the fourth, fourth chapter. One more next slide. Yeah, this was, thank you. Strengths and uh, significantly improvement the situation of the law of the last few years, but maybe I will, okay, I, I will try to, to explain more. Substantial increase in the level and the quality of most doctoral programs have been mentioned. Also, uh, this is uh, what can be really recognized as a good practice in the last ten years. And usually, uh, the graduates from the from this kind of doctoral uh, level uh, of education in art, uh, they are continue as as uh, uh, academic staff, and and uh, usually these are kind of. Uh, let's say initiators for the the better uh, standards of of a quality assurance uh, in, the, in the schools. Uh, also, uh, in the last fifteen years, we find like very big movement in the the, the open space uh, and approaches to the disabled people. And uh, also we can see uh, like how is better the gender balance, but it's not enough. It's really step by step uh, and it's going better, but uh, will be or should be much, much more, much better. Uh, there's also a very uh, complicated situation uh, in, in, the, in, in kind of uh, feedback in the, in the profession based uh, uh, disciplines. Uh, which is uh, quite interesting, uh, the situation in, in the drama faculties. Maybe I I, I'm, I'm, I'm so, sorry, sorry, I, to, sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, this, this, is, this is really such fascinating stuff and I'm really sorry we, I need to uh, interrupt, but would it be possible if you spoke about the seventh point um, briefly and maybe we could, um, if, if it's okay with you to share the presentation? Um, with um, with the participants, so we just so that we have enough time to discuss all of this that you're um, talking as well, if that's okay. Yeah, it is. It is okay. Yeah. Thank I'm, you so much. Thank for, you for my for my for my speech because I'm, in fact, I'm in English and I'm an autodidact. I'm I'm not using English so often, 
so I'm a bit nervous. Not at all, not at all. No, this is all very important and actually quality assurance involving students in quality assurance, you can't really cover it in two hours. You need longer than that. But if we could just, uh, maybe if you could speak about the seventh point. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, the my especially if I'm speaking uh, more about my institution, uh, the, the I recognize quite interesting, uh, uh, but also a little bit dangerous for the students for future. Uh, in faculty of music, like students, uh, uh, lack of interest uh, in the settings of of school processes. Uh, these students are really satisfied with the condition, equipment, organization, and settings of the institutes uh, uh, at which they are educated. And they are speaking all the time like we don't need any change. And uh, uh, we are speaking about like more than 90% of the students in, in this way. It's, it's interesting. Uh, and it's also some kind of consequence to the, uh, let's say, like li lifelong building of the f this kind of like fate of authority uh, and, and a trust to teacher. And uh, because uh, since five, five uh, years age, they are really trained to, to, to be able to, to, to play the, 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 the instruments and the, and uh, if they are focusing on the theory, it's usually only, uh, let's say, like history of their instrument. And uh, this is very one-sided uh, development of an interest uh, in only one type of activity. And uh, so it's, it's interesting because I'm also uh, lecturing uh, for all the uh, students from faculty about kind of applied psychology. We are discussing about like dev like more wide wider uh, and more complex development of of a personality and it's interesting how they are like really satisfied with their own position uh, uh, also we, we found in report some kind of uh, like like recommendations and uh, and uh, we in fact uh, uh, especially uh, in formalizing uh, the student support services uh, and the it was and the, the external evaluation was made in a in a period which we uh, for example created new website and and uh, we opened after that like yamu information center and uh, re renewed collaboration with the universities which was very good uh, for the uh, have more opportunities to get some courses uh, and then the subjects in, in the different universities like masaryk university or the, the university of technology and so on uh, but still, there is a, like uh, the big space for create some kind of informal uh, uh, territory, let's say so, uh, in the school for uh, the, the, the give the students a chance uh, to, to meet each other. Because as I recognize the, the, the music uh, students or, or students of the music uh, study programs, they are really focused on their own uh, way of development and they are not really interested in, in, in the next uh, music instrument, even not, uh, for example, fine art or, or, or drama or something, mm -hmm. something like that. And the, 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 the other faculty of our school, which is a very unique situation, we have only two faculties, like Faculty of Music yeah. and Theater Faculty. Uh, there maybe I can re uh, recommend two different <coughs> good, uh, okay. uh, good uh, examples. Mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a really interesting example of a good practice, uh, I, I can see uh, how the students are engaged uh, to have a look into the internal processes through the uh, participation on, on artistic uh, uh, big event, which is in Kandra festival of theater universities from all over the world. Every year between eight to 10 performances we are speaking about. And, and all students take part in the preparation of that festival from setting uh, the topics, announcing the calls, selecting the participant performances uh, to the organizing and promoting the entire uh, festival program. Uh, this is really uh, like not part of the, uh, of the educators or, or, or teachers. They are only kind of methodolo methodological supervisors of that. 
And the second thing is a very good example of a progressive thinking about the involvement of the disabled uh, uh, in, in artistic operation uh, is the drama education for the deaf, which is really focused not uh, as a as a let's say like some special pedagogy, but uh, more uh, as a regular education for the artistic practice, which is like uh, as I see uh, in in Central Europe quite unique. Um, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, if we if if we can just um, yes, thank you for um, your uh, presentation. I'm sure there are lots of questions. I have a lot of questions as well. Uh, but um, we have somebody in the chat. So there there are questions that are coming through the chat. Please keep asking the questions. And if you would like, you could also raise your hands and speak, um, ask your question as well. Um, if I could have Peggy as well to join our. Um, just the Q&A session briefly. Uh, Peggy, one of the questions that Linda had posed to you earlier was about if you could talk about training. I'm going to try and um, go to the question, but uh, just some more details about how the ESU pool trains the students and what maybe just like a few main elements of what the training covers. Okay, yeah, so uh, it depends because uh, first we assess, uh, so when all the students are admitted to the pool, we assess their knowledge level and uh, what we also noticed is that someone who is more advanced, for example, three or four years uh, in QA, they don't, they no longer want to have like the basic presentation, what is quality assurance, etc. Uh, so we always organize, uh, usually we did uh, for the past two years, the training with the NBAO, which is the Flanders Agency. And uh, it's basically a three day training, uh, which covers the topics of communication within the panel, different roles within the panels, uh, student uh, expertise and student roles. Um, then, uh, for example, we have also some examples from the practice, so some uh, real life examples that we take from Descartes, for example, and uh, we read through them with the students and then the students have a small role play to also understand a little bit better uh, the role they're supposed to play within these panels. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I have another question. Uh, it's nice to see the chat uh, being quite vibrant and active now, that's great. There's another question from um, uh, Dame Janet, if I will just get that. Uh, uh, Mimi, if I could ask this question to you, um, mm. to consider how student representation in other institutional contexts, for example, bodies such as in the UK governing bodies, academic board, etc., impact on the reception of student views in relation to quality assurance and enhancement. Absolutely. Thank you for the for the question. I think I think in the UK in particular, we're very fortunate that the 1994 Education Act really kind of enforced student unions in and they kind of embedded student unions, man, legally mandated them um, to, to be a part of institutional culture. And so having student involvement in, you know, ev every aspect just kind of helps embed that idea almost subconsciously um, that, you know, that that students you know should be taken seriously and I think you know if we look if we look at the sector in Europe I think for example the AEC and the European Music Council in particular they're doing fantastic things in terms of championing student voice and I think by leading by example that will help kind of have that trickle down effect to other institutions to on a, on a more local level to institutions. Thank you. Um, this is perhaps a question to um, all three of you. Uh, Jacques actually raises some very philosophical um, questions um, and talking about li listening to student voice, etc. is like, when do you start considering student as a partner and not somebody that you're teaching? Um, you know, when, when does that happen? Also, um, that also brings in the discussion of power relations in higher education music institutions and what impact that has. Um, and the other is, when do you consider the music student to be an artist? And when do you consider the music student as an artist and researcher? So, I mean, I, I, I have some strong opinions about it, but please, um, if there are speakers and if there's anybody else as well who'd like to contribute to the discussion, then please to raise your hands. But yes. Uh, yes, Mimi, please go ahead. I'll go ahead. Sorry, I just paused to see if the other two wanted to jump in. Um, I think I think that really 
does kind of depend on the member of staff in particular. But if you see that you've got a really enthusiastic, engaged student who wants to discuss quality enhancement in their institution, and they're trying to work with you in a collaborative way by coming with solutions, I mean, for me, that's how I would consider a student as a partner rather than someone just coming with, you know, being unproductive. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, Peggy. Yeah, I have to agree uh, completely with Mimi. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, I think it really depends on the chair, but I think it also depends on um, how this, like how much experience does the student have. But I think we should always take into consideration that the student is there to be a partner, because I think that students within a panel who comes there uh, for an assessment is not a student. He's there or she's there uh, in another role. Um, and I know it's a little bit hard, but I think that most of the time the students just want to be listened to. So um, there can still be this respectful relationship like a student teacher and the student will always be a little bit uncertain. But I, I don't think that the student is necessarily be, uh, going to be like, I want to have my word and say, but they want to be listened to and uh, uh, they also want to contribute completely. So I think that just under giving to the student a little more understanding um, is actually what's going to make them equal and make them feel like they're uh, also equal to you as a panel member. Thank you. Yes. Um, um, we, we have a question from Anna Maria. Um, she says, thank you, first of all. Um, uh, she just wanted to know more about what are the institutional actions that could improve the level of equality of students in quality assurance contexts? Um, can students help improve the impact of quality assurance practices on daily institutional life and how? So maybe if you could very briefly um, just go around the speakers, the presenters, perhaps one thing or, yes, uh, Ricard, please. Yeah, uh, I, my experience is like, if I will really find somebody who uh, is interesting in, uh, interested in uh, how to make the things better, uh, and you start uh, to explain him, uh, like the, the quality uh, in the school, it's not related only the outcomes, and uh, and let's say like good music in the concert or nice uh, performance in 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 the gallery, uh, they are quite uh, open for start to be more partners because they recognize like uh, it's like it's usually normal in in, a, in the daily life we are speaking about like what is really for me uncomfortable what is uh, uh, my feeling about like what could be uh, happen better. But what is, for example, in Czech and in Central Europe, in this kind of post-communist uh, territory, mm -hmm. it's uh, one big problem and uh, that the, every critical comment is a kind of attack. This is really deeply in the people, like this feeling about like, and that it's not so easy to, to start uh, made really kind of dialogue which has this kind of critical uh, and uh, the, like background, like the, the, like speaking about like what I'm doing really like bad way. Uh, it's like, it's not so easy to ask the students from my position, like if I'm asking about my work, like what, can you tell me what I'm doing? Like not really proper, not good, not, not, not well as yeah. you, as you feel what should be. And, uh, and then start to thinking, speaking about like, what is expectation? What is, and this is, and it should be daily life, the problem, yeah. not kind of like formal system, which is usually in our countries, in our, our schools, like, and, and it's, for me, it's natural, yeah. uh, especially in my language, like uh, not, not only the, in English, but yeah. it's, it's, this is, this is my opinion, like only yeah. the start, the speaking with the students, uh, what doesn't mean the critical dialogue, so. I think it's very important point that you've raised that uh, quality assurance is not something that's just a fixing on the top level. I think there are some deeply rooted systemic issues in our communities, depending on political context, etc. That's just one example, but I think it's a very good example of how this runs deeper and is actually connected to our everyday life and culture and ways of thinking as well. Um, Peggy and uh, Mimi, if you have 
Yeah, I can uh, also say, uh, I, I remember, for example, from my personal experience, um, how it started. Uh, I really wanted to make sure that micro credentials are being recognized at uh, my university. And I remember it was five years of effort to put in and to constantly complain, complain and complain until the people just couldn't listen to me anymore. So they were like, okay, you do your stuff and uh, then uh, we're gonna see how to implement it. And in the end, uh, from my university, this example got to the national level and now on the national level, the regulation for Croatia um, is a little more strict when it comes to micro-credentials and um, awarding ECTS points also for uh, some extracurricular activities uh, of the students. So I think it all depends, but I, I agree with uh, Richard that it really starts with this um, personal engagement and uh, the personal will of a person to change something or to do something and then to kind of just push for it a little bit or yeah. fall into the ears of understanding. Wonderful. Thank you. Mimi, did you have? Yeah, I was just going to just going to add to that very briefly. I mean, for me, it's, it's it, you know, yes, it's about the personal in motivations, but also from an institutional point of view. What about internal communications? You know, it's like I keep saying, closing the feedback loop, providing, you know, transparency, because that will breed faith and trust. And it might lead to more engagement by the wider student body. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am aware that we're running. Yeah. We Yes, sorry, Ricardo. That's something like uh, it's really like about the communication and in, in, the, in the most of that, like really uh, like missing things in the, in the, in the, in the evolution reports and all that institution I, I was coordinating this kind of like external evaluation was a kind of like trouble with the, with the institutional communication system. Yeah. And uh, and the, the travel like it's hard to explain to the people what does it mean you know and it's like uh, usually like what I feel or I see not I feel I see in yeah. our institutions is like like uh, there is like no horizontal communication like uh, the, between the departments or also in a in a senior management like the vice directors are not so discussing uh, between each other like yeah. what's the development of, of of strategy of a school and so on but the down it's like going properly and very well because it's about the orders and then the, this kind of like vertical communication it's no problem and this comeback is no problem and and this is it's it's really it's really strange and that uh, this way like uh, i don't know if it is so easy Easy. maybe you should learn us like how to communicate better because i saw like many western universities and schools it's like much better even for example like really start to, to, to make a critical dialogue so very interesting points raised as well um i'm I'm, I'm again as i mentioned i'm aware we're running a wee bit over time if that's okay uh, i would definitely would like to hear from uh francesco uh, talking about the italian perspective if that's okay with everybody to just stay on a wee bit longer thank you uh francesco if you're still here um uh just to give a perspective about the italian uh, Okay. All right. While we wait for Francesco, um, there was another comment in the chat made by um, Dame Janet. Um, um, uh, oh, this was actually um, another comment. Uh, it is. It talks about the positive development of increasing quality culture and the involvement of students um, in regards to. In several countries, discussions going on about moving forward towards institutional accreditation and to give institutions more responsibility to safeguard the quality of individual individual programs themselves. So this perhaps could be a positive development uh, that increases quality culture uh, and also with involving students. But perhaps Peggy um, and Miranda, if you have a couple of points, maybe to finish the conversation. Okay, <laughs> Peggy first. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, well, I, I didn't exactly understand. The, yeah, the I, sorry, I will, I will try and read the question again. Um, so in several countries, discussion is going on about moving towards institutional accreditation and to move the institution and to give the institutions more responsibility to safeguard the quality of the individual programs themselves. Uh, this could be a positive development that increases the quality culture. Uh, and also help with the involvement of students. But what 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 do you, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, well, I think that um, institution there definitely the QA agency, the national one, is to uh, have an overlook uh, over the programs and uh, just really make sure that they're being developed well and done well. But I think that we shouldn't underestimate also this. Um, international side of it and the uh, mutual cooperation uh, between the institutions so it's really nice to uh, make sure that um, the national structures have a certain level of, of autonomy but i'm very careful when using the words for example power uh, because it's much better uh, to have this open dialogue and we are going into the uh, building of the European education area, lifelong learning processes, we're all opening towards um, other countries and um, internationalization perspectives, we have the joint degrees, so I think that now more than ever this, um, I would say, collaboration between the European values and then uh, the national values will be necessary to kind of assure that the quality and the standard of uh, certain programs is no longer at the national but more on the european level that's great um thank you peggy we've oh we've got uh, francesco francesco would you like to i'm afraid we're running out of time so it will have to be a brief um and i'm sorry about that that um if you'd like to share Oh, you cannot unmute yourself. Um, Anna, would you mind helping us? Thank you. May, may I use the moment for, to, for may, may I kind of add it, uh, let's say comment to that institutional accreditation. Uh, could be uh, very good if we can use this kind of like international uh, uh, overview for this kind of feedback through the inst institutions. But uh, if we uh, will really lock the, uh, the accreditation procedure into the, the one institution, as I told in, in my previous speech, like we are very small institutions. And for example, in several fields, only one or two uh, different institutions in one, one national uh, territory. It means like will be really everything will be cooked only at home. Now, nothing will be uh, as a kind of, uh, let's say, like ex external uh, feedback used for the uh, development of, 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 the, of the space for education. Thank you. Um, so have, have we gotten any... Francesco, would it be possible to... So it's not letting us unmute you for some reason. Perhaps you could just type up your response while I'm just doing uh, some of the... Oh. Well, he might be able yeah. to speak yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very sorry for the delay. I was muted for a long time. Uh, I say hi to Mimi and also to Angna and to Linda that we managed also to see each other in Antwerp. It's very good. Um, I just wanted to share the Italian experience. I see also that there is Roberto Antonello, the new president of the rectors of the conservatoires in Italy, and it's very good to see him here uh, because I'm president ele uh, elected president for the students in Italy. And from this year, we finally have these students in the panels of evaluation for conservatoires. This year, this year was the first. We never had. I was one of the first students that has this contract of evaluation. I attended the music training so I had the chance to put into act what I had learned at the music training and it's very good that for Italy also we are getting to be in line with the standards for external evaluation and just that it's it's a strong hope that I give that also the countries that sometimes are a bit behind they manage to have this kind of realignment so it was just to share that yeah. Italy there finally with students in the panel. Wonderful. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, I think that is a brilliant way to um, end the presentation and the question answer um, uh, section. Thank you very much. Um, just a couple of things before we uh, go our own ways. Um, um, and if you'd like to share uh, the slide. So I personally have been part of a few reviews um, as a student reviewer for music and also with ECA in Estonia um, and QAA here in the UK. Um, as as you're already aware, uh, the list of resources, if you like, um, you could visit um, Music's website, but also another useful handbook is the AC Student uh, Voice, uh, Student Representation Handbook, which is also, um, I think if I'm not uh, wrong, is also now translated in Spanish and hopefully we will see it in other languages as well. But it's a great tool if you'd like to share it with your own institutions. We will share the link in the email as well. Um, at the moment, um, a revision is taking place for the music standards and um, hopefully they will be updated. Uh, we're all aware that uh, things need to be changed and updated regularly. And that's what we're working at. Well, um, I will not keep you any longer. I would like to thank our three speakers for today for sharing all that valuable insight and information. And we hope this will be the start of discussion and not an end to this very important area of uh, quality assurance. Uh, as mentioned, this has been recorded. So the recording will be available on the music website shortly. Uh, this was the second of these webinar series and there are more in um, coming in the next year. Um, as they're free to attend, please feel to share this with your um, within your institutions. And um, a feedback questionnaire will be sh uh, shared to everybody. So we would request, please, feed, uh, please uh, fill it in and send it to us so we're able to organize more of these webinars or um, activities for our members and otherwise as well. Uh, thank you very much and it's been an honor to be with all of you this morning. Have a lovely week ahead. Thank you very much.